All right. So while we're still on the subject of control surfaces, uh, we'll carry on. Um, so what I've done is put the pins in halfway on the hinges, same as with the wing. And I have put the elevator connecting rod in here uh, so that I know that the elevator is in the right position as far as each piece is concerned uh, when it meets with the stabilizer. Um, and just like with the wing, we went by and made sure that the uh, cuts in the stabilizer line up with all the hinges that are there. Um, you always want to make sure that they work here because you don't want to find out after you've glued them that you need to make another hinge slot or anything because the, uh, the wood is weak enough as it is. You don't want to make bigger holes in it. In fact, let's, let's take a look at that one more time. Looks like maybe that hinge right here can go in. Um, so that's that, uh, oh no, it is lined up actually, the cut, you just can't see the cut very well. Um, so we'll go ahead and take this connecting rod back out and we'll apply glue to each of these hinges, uh, only on the surface side, again, um, and we'll worry about this piece later as it comes up. One thing I do want to point out is I did use the uh, Dubro plastic hinges on the tail and on the rudder. And the reason for this is the tail wheel. The tail wheel will absorb quite a bit of shock as, as the tail comes down on the runway. Um, and you don't want to pay for a hard landing by having your rudder fall off, which has happened with the nylon hinges. Um, but there is a certain way to prep these. You can see all the goop that's on there. That goop is actually petroleum jelly. And you do this so that the hinge doesn't absorb any glue. You pack pack that hinge pin with petroleum jelly and uh, then apply just a dab of glue on each side of the hinge and insert it. Uh, and you wanna make sure that that hinge is well lubricated and well protected from the adhesive. Otherwise you won't uh, you won't get a uh, flexible hinge out of it. Um, one thing that I do do differently, do do, uh, with these plastic hinges is I will use uh, Gorilla Glue instead of the traditional CA. I do that because the Gorilla Glue gives you time to work with the hinge. Uh, and it expands to fill the holes that you see, the Swiss cheese holes, uh, and providing a better bond, basically. Just a dab, doesn't take much. You definitely never want to overuse Gorilla Glue because it expands. Uh, that's, that's an important factor. So next thing we'll do is we'll install the stabilizers this piece and this piece, and uh, we'll, we'll show you some geometry. All right, just to uh, catch everybody up, one thing I've done is I have pulled the wires for the elevator and the rudder from their corresponding servos, which I've installed the same way that you install the uh, servos on the wings. You just gotta cut out the, uh, cut out the space here and uh, pull the wires using the same uh, push rod, the one meter push rod that I use. 
and uh, preparing to epoxy the stabilizers, but I'm waiting for the epoxy to come in. So I'm going to do the landing gear and the fuel tank. The fuel tank is going to be a little tricky because it's it's just big enough to fit through there and I've got to figure out how to fit the foam around it without, I don't know, without previously installing the foam on the tank. I have to find a way to fit the foam into that area of the fuselage, hopefully surrounding the tank. Uh, but I have done these holes here in the covering uh, in preparation for the landing gear struts, which will go here. Uh, I did install the axles and the wheels. Uh, one thing that I do with landing gear, uh, and really any part that might come under uh, vibration or energy, is I use Loctite medium strength. Uh, medium so that if I need to I can take it back off but it doesn't vibrate loose so I used the thread lock here on this nut thread lock there on that nut and also on this grub screw right here I thread locked that now one thing I also did is before I put that collar on right there is I used my Dremel with the cutting disc to cut a flat surface into that part of the axle. That way the grub screw won't spin around on accident. It's got a flat surface that it uh, grips to. So now I'll also use the thread lock on the screws for the wheel struts. Stay tuned. As you can see, the struts are now on. The wheels are attached, free spinning. Uh, I, I didn't mention that, but you do want to leave a little bit of play there. Not a whole lot, but a little bit of play uh, to let the wheels spin freely. One problem that I encountered, uh, if you can tell on this side right here is uh, the struts were too long. They, they overlapped. And I don't know if that's because of this, the, the mount positions, like where they set the screw holes, or if the strut was just molded too long. It looks like where they set the screw holes was off. So to compensate for that, I used the Dremel to cut this edge I took like maybe two millimeters off three millimeters uh, so that it would sit normally on the fuselage uh, that's so far the only major thing on the undercarriage okay just to catch you up <clears throat> so we installed the elevator servo the rudder servo and the tail uh, I went ahead and installed the engine. I will show you that here. Uh, exhaust on the right side, pilot's right. Um, we got the vent and fuel tubes here marked, clearly labeled V and F, so that I know which way to go with them. Uh, and the throttle push rod was a little bit tricky. Uh, I installed it just like right on top of the motor mount. You can see the motor mount here. Um, it's got a plastic clevis. I wasn't used to that. I hope that it lasts. I don't want a worn out plastic clevis. Um, but installed that tube which came all the way back to here to the throttle servo. I'll show you in a second. Um, also had to make a cutout for my uh, mixture. I have the extension on there just because I don't like putting my hand close to the prop. Um, and the uh, 
front of the motor sticks out about a quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch from the, uh, from the nose. So that should be plenty of clearance for the prop. Uh, I'm using an OS 55 AX, uh, 55 size motor on this one. Uh, the receiver here is the new uh, in internal antenna spectrum receiver, six channel AR620. Uh, I had it on another aircraft and it worked out pretty well. Um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and flip the flip the fuse back over. Uh, so as you can see, I you know like before, I had the uh, elevator and rudder wires already coming in. Um, as far as the padding on the battery, I got a flat. Uh, Nikat or nickel metal hydride. To, it's a 2000 milliamp flat nickel metal hydride battery that I put under there. Uh, the foam on top and on all four sides. I uh, used a popsicle stick right there to keep the foam in, to keep the foam away from the receiver. The receiver's gonna live right here. Uh, put the battery here to try to keep the, the weight over the CG. Uh, I'll probably wind up adding weight to the tail just because the motor's pretty heavy. On installing the fuel tank, I uh, I went ahead and put padding on on all four sides here, and then a little bit of padding in the back, and cut some popsicle sticks and uh, glued them accordingly to keep the uh, the foam away. You want to keep this surface flat so that when you install the wing every time, there's nothing in the way of it. Uh, as the wiring goes, I got the throttle servo here, like I was saying, this is the push rod. It, it took some creative uh, bending to get the push rod to move unobstructed. Uh, so you'll, you'll have to figure that one out. Um, you just don't wanna you don't want it binding up at all. You never want any of your servos to bind up. The only binding you want to have happen is with the receiver and the transmitter. Um, the switch I got from Amazon, it's an Apex RC uh, long switch. The screws fit perfectly onto the, uh, onto the body there because there's a smaller piece of balsa, not this thickness, but a, a different thickness right there. Um, and I've got the, uh, the battery all wired up with the charger lead right here. So when I need to charge the airplane, it's going to be readily accessible. Uh, and I'm about to run the receiver and then clean up all the wires. I've got my two leads here, my right aileron and my left aileron for the wing. You want to have little, uh, little tails there so that you can easily connect the wing when you need to uh, at the field. Um, I get these extensions super cheap, uh, also from Apex RC. This is, this is Amazon stuff, Apex is on Amazon. Uh, they made the switch to, which was on Amazon. Um, and as long as you get the JR Spectrum connector type, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, I had I had to get the charge lead uh, also for the uh, receiver from Amazon. This is a product that you can get that has banana plugs on one side for your charger and then this uh, servo plug on the other side for the receiver. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm almost ready to put the wing on. Once I put the wing on, we'll do the geometry with the tail, uh, the stabilizers. I've just been waiting to uh, get the wiring all figured out before I put the wing on for the first time. So stand by for that. All right. So here we are. Uh, I have <clears throat> cut the bolt or the uh, the skin off of the uh, the areas where I applied the epoxy. It's really important that you use 30 minute epoxy so that you have time to make the adjustments as they're needed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and re-measure, make sure all my measurements are still correct. 
uh, you leave the marking on the tail uh, on the horizontal stabilizer so that when you slide it into place you can make sure that it's it's in line uh, this may be able to be removed later it may not depending on the epoxy uh, I've learned to use kind of a lighter a lighter amount of epoxy uh, I put this in before I installed the stabilizer that way I know it moves freely it's okay it can reach both elevators um, and I applied the epoxy to the vertical stabilizer uh, you don't need to use a whole lot it's it's easy to use too much and then you get like a bead that goes all the way down here um, or, or what have you I just make sure that I always have uh, q-tips handy and uh, paper towel you, you don't see my paper towel right now because I've, I've already used it um, and parchment paper parchment paper is really good anytime you're using adhesives because it won't allow uh, the adhesives to get on whatever your work surface is. I prefer like a towel or something soft on the work surface uh, which unfortunately uses it, it absorbs a lot of glue but if you use the parchment paper on top of that it won't absorb any of the adhesive. Um, so I did turn the radio on and I zeroed out the rear servos uh, and then installed the servo arms. Being a 3D airplane, uh, you want as much throw as possible. So I've used some pretty long arms here. These are the uh, Dubro long JR servo arms, JR Spectrum. JR stuff and Spectrum stuff works together in general. And it's interesting because only recently have they started including the JR logos <laughs> with their products? Obviously, they figured out that uh, you know if you can't beat them, join them. Um, it's kind of funny, actually. I'm not going to put any of those uh, decals on because this this airplane already has plenty of art on it uh, with the colors and the twist logo and all that stuff. So we're going to wait for the epoxy to dry. And as soon as the epoxy dries, we'll go ahead and add the control surfaces. We have the elevators here that are pre-hinged and uh, the rudder here that has the plastic hinges. Uh, so stay tuned for that. So here we are with the essentially completed Twist 40. Um, We've got the 55AX in the front. I don't know about the P-Factor. For, for whatever reason, I feel like the P-Factor wasn't necessarily built into this one. I don't know if I got it right, but we'll find out on takeoff. Um, got the uh, elevator and rudder control horns on there. Um, they're all analog servos. I didn't, I didn't go with the digital servo. Uh, we'll go ahead and power on the transmitter. Um, here we go. Twist 40. All right. Throttle at zero. Uh, you can see the canopy glue here. And the, the twitch for the startup. With the analog, there's always a big twitch. Uh, here's the rudder. Now the rudder, just the way I used uh, Gorilla Glue on the surface side, I used the Gorilla Glue on the uh, stabilizer side so that it's, it's way more stout. Uh, here's the elevator. There we go. And then here's the ailerons. The ailerons have a whole lot of throw. You watch it from this direction. Um, and then the throttle. I'll show you the carburetor. Uh, so I start it with just a little bit open. And then that's all the way open. And then there's the throttle cut. The throttle cut will zero it out. Um, 
Again, I think it's weird that they use a plastic clevis on the uh, throttle, but we'll see how that works out. Hopefully it doesn't get stuck. If it does get stuck, we'll glide down. Uh, and that's how the Twist 40 works. Hopefully this canopy glue dries well because the canopy looks like shit between you and me. Uh, I've got some masking tape on both sides. Uh, but it doesn't matter how much glue I put on there. We'll see. We'll see what happens.